Hi, I'm Renewable Energy Steve, and welcome to my video on why I chose Heater Bowl for my latest solar expansion. Before I begin, it's worth saying this video is not sponsored by them in any way, and it's not your usual recommendation video either. It's an honest account of why I think it should be the right choice for me, taking all factors into consideration. This isn't my first dealing with Heater Bowl as a solar installer. Actually, I had a very mixed experience with them just under a year ago, but more on that later. But firstly, why do I even need more solar? I have two arrays with a very sizable output. The answer lies in my very first video from January 2025, where I set out two ambitious goals. Firstly, to achieve net zero energy usage across the whole year. And secondly, to achieve total energy bills of under zero pounds across the year. My net zero ambitions got a great boost with the install of my heat pump. I've had it working for just over a month now, uh, and I managed to get it installed a lot quicker and cheaper than I expected, which was fantastic. If that's of interest, I have some videos that are well worth checking out. While my projections seem close to achieving net zero, it seems like we'll be slightly short. And that's before you even take into account things like adverse weather over the year, uh, higher than average mileage uh, due to travel, um, and evolving general household. For example, at the moment we're using our washing machine a lot more than we did. So the solution? More solar. Solar is typically the best form of energy creation on a residential setting. But I've already used my south, east and west aspects of my roof. So surely I've used up everything that's any use. Well, not quite. So I have a garage and it's a reasonable size. I can get a few panels on there. And it has a split of south and north. Like the main roof, it has an azimuth of 195 on the south side, and it has a pitch of 30 degrees rather than 40, which should help a little bit in the winter. I also have space for two north-facing panels on my main roof. Now we all know that the north aspect is the weakest because the sun obviously shines uh, from the south during the day, but data from PVGIS and PV Watts shows it's around 51% as effective as south over the course of a year. And it's a lot closer than that in the summer months when the sun is high. North panels also start generating very early. And on dark overcast winter days, uh, the orientation really doesn't matter that much. Where solar installers are concerned, it's always worth reaching out to multiple installers. So that's what I did, mostly to smaller local solar specialists. I explained I wanted to make the most of my garage and what the target energy creation was going to be. One was put off entirely by having existing systems already in place at the property. They really didn't like that. Another couple were very slow to progress conversations. They would have something like one email per week. And at that, uh, that cadence, it was very difficult to fine tune the design. It's not ideal when you have a clear vision of exactly what you want. So at this stage, you're probably thinking, well, why didn't I reach out to Heatable if they already did my East and West array? Okay, so let's get on to that mixed experience I uh, referred to earlier. Heatable installed my east and west array, but there were a few things that happened at the time of the installation which knocked my confidence in them a little bit. First of which, the panels didn't actually generate properly for the first 48 hours. They would switch on and then off again, and then on and then off again, uh, and they do this over and over again. Now it could be that uh, because it was commissioned at night and the first couple of days were quite dark days in October, um, it, it could be that it just didn't have enough power to do whatever updates that they needed to do. Uh, and the whole process just got elongated um, and, and manifested in that way. But when you have something that just doesn't do what it's supposed to for the first couple of days, you really start to uh, to doubt and, uh, and, and lack confidence. Uh, but ultimately, that, that was sorted in the end. It, it just magically started working and the results ever since then have been fine. The second issue I had was that the battery was not aware of the generation coming from the new array. In fact, at some points it just registered as negative home load. In fact, it really messed with the usage data, the import, export algorithms, etc. Um, so even though an additional power wall was part of that particular installation, um, it felt like there wasn't the necessary amount of knowledge there. Um, the issue was actually caused by um, the new uh, solar array uh, not having its generation me measured within the Tesla's CT clamp, uh, which it needs to be. Uh, all uh, incoming solar needs to be uh, measured within the Tesla CT clamp, otherwise uh, that's the outcome. Uh, so worth bearing in mind uh, for anyone having additional 
uh, solar uh, when you have a Tesla Powerwall or some other batteries probably have the similar issue uh, if, uh, if not set up correctly. Another issue I had at point of install was the end phase app incorrectly had each panel listed so ones in shade were shown as generating more than ones out of shade uh, which looked really weird so I flagged that up uh, and that had to be retested and uh, moved around in the app again it was uh, it was fixed relatively quickly uh, but it was just one of those things where if they'd have just taken a bit more time uh, they could have got that mapped up uh, correctly and my final gripe, which you might hear me moan about in pretty much every one of my monthly generation update videos, is the shading calculations were not correct. Uh, so the monthly estimates are inaccurate. Um, shading is a major factor due to the roof uh, shape. Um, the estimates were far too high in winter, and this was pretty obvious uh, based on uh, one of the uh, days in October, shortly after the install, um, once everything was up and running correctly. Uh, it was a perfect sunny day uh, and it produced uh, around about uh, what, it's, what, what they said would be the average for the month uh, and with that amount of shading, um, yeah, there's just no way it could have done any more. So uh, it was pretty obvious that the uh, winter numbers were, were inaccurate, which, which is a shame. Um, but uh, it looks like f over the course of the year, I don't think those numbers are too far off, but uh, it's always nice to get accurate numbers, really. So with that all said, it doesn't sound like the greatest installation, does it? Well, let's be fair, there were some positives too. Um, so firstly, we really maximised the roof space. I still don't know of any other system that probably would have been able to achieve the same amount of output, uh, given the shading um, and the space constraints that were available. I think we pretty much did the best we could in terms of getting the best system for the type of roof. Um, it's been a high quality system. It's been functioning well since the uh, the initial issues. Um, Heatable's DNO communications were great. My DNO is particularly slow. Um, took over three months uh, on both occasions that I applied um, for export. Um, the customer service team were very polite and very quick to respond to issues and all those complaints I mentioned earlier, uh, they were dealt with in the right way. Um, I did leave a very mixed uh, Trustpilot review uh, and they immediately the very next day got in contact with me. We had uh, around about a 45 minute conversation uh, about every one of those points uh, and how uh, they can learn from that uh, going forward um, and hence uh, when it comes to uh, looking for another solar install, um, I was happy to reach out to Heatable. Um, we had a design conversation uh, and we were able to really get down into the specifics very, very quickly. The conversation was only about 20 minutes long. Uh, I was able to get a quote 30 minutes after that. The estimated figures seem a lot more feasible these, uh, this time around. Um, I did do my own calculations uh, as well, um, just to, to kind of verify uh, what they came up with. Um, and the shade factor was, was all taken into account uh, correctly across the months from, from what I can see. Uh, their figures were within 5% of, of what I came up with um, using uh, PV watts as, uh, as a basis. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely uh, some other upsides as well in terms of their tech. I noticed the REA Fusion 2 spec sheet is slightly different to what it was when I originally bought it. They were 440 watt panels, now they're labelled as 450 watt panels. Degradation curve and the temperature coefficient has also been approved and uh, they really look something special now. They, they're absolutely market leading which is very very impressive. Um, I was a little bit confused initially because the model number had no increment from what I had before so I'm thinking are these the same panels are they slightly improved or whatever uh, the explanation seems to be um, they are uh, the same model line but they've improved their manufacturing process ever so slightly um, so they are now able to be rated as 450 watt panels instead of 440 uh, and they've done more testing on the um, uh, degradation curve and uh, temperature coefficients and uh, now have the confidence to um, put them uh, as, a, as a slightly higher uh, rating. 
Um, so uh, in terms of um, the dimensions as well, um, same dimensions as uh, when I when I got these panels before, um, but they're ever so slightly smaller um, than some of the other ones I was looking at. So uh, a panel which is quite well known about now is the Aco Neostar uh, 2S. Uh, they make them in 460 watts. Um, they're ever so slightly bit larger. They're very efficient panels uh, and they come in at a very good price too. Uh, so I was very tempted by them. Uh, but in terms of my garage size, the um, compact, slightly more compact nature uh, of the REA Fusion 2s uh, means that I might just be able to get four panels on each side of the garage rather than three. Um, so I, I don't know this for sure. Um, it's going to be very, very tight either way. Um, so uh, yeah, w there's probably a 75% chance that I'll be able to get four on. Uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll know exactly um, when they come to do it, which will be later this week. Uh, so that's something to keep a, an eye on. Uh, so will I regret going with Heatable? One thing to note about Heatable Solar is as a national installer, they will be using subcontractors as they did last time. Now with subcontractors, you could make the assumption that they have varying skill levels. They may be more likely to cut corners. They may focus on profits over customer service, uh, but that's perhaps uh, sweeping, uh, sweeping assumptions that are maybe a bit unfair. Uh, but we'll know uh, later this week because they will be installing. I am really hoping for a successful integration. Uh, it will be the same um, subcontractors who did it last time. Uh, and what I do know about them is uh, when they uh, did things that, that weren't up to the, uh, the standard that I was hoping for, they were very quick to, uh, to come back out uh, and rectify things. Um, so at least that's, uh, that's kind of a, a proven track record. Um, in terms of the tech, it's solid, it's proven to me. Uh, this will be an extension to my east and west uh, side array rather than a whole new array. So that's an important distinction um, to be made. Um, I do know that in terms of uh, maximizing uh, the, the output uh, on the south side or on the garage, it will be clipping at times because the uh, microinverters max out at 380 watts. Uh, but that's absolutely nothing compared to um, not having the extra panel, um, which if I went with anyone else because of the size of the panels, uh, I know I would not get uh, four panels uh, on each side. Um, so overall, um, this setup should help me uh, reach my net zero aspirations. If you are still here, a big thank you for watching till the end. It's been a slightly lengthy explanation, I know, but I hope you will agree, an insightful one. I'll follow up on this channel in the near future after the install. If you have enjoyed this, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.